was one of the most attended exhibitions in 2008 in Yuan. Hey, Yuan, wie geht's dir? Nice to see you. Uh, I'm okay. It's kind of a weird situation. Um, Where are you? In a car? I'm in a car on the way to a lake uh, in, in somewhere nice. in Berlin. Nice. So we have the drive. We have the drive, yeah. <laughs> nice. But you're, I, still, I, you're still in the city. Which lake are you going to? Uh, what lake are we going to? Zeuthen. Zeuthen lake. Zeuthen. That's about half an hour. So you better be fast. <laughs> exactly. That's what I scheduled for our conversation. <laughs> being efficient. Being efficient. Uh, Julian, I just said, I think that your exhibition um, um, manifesto at Hamburger Bahnhof was one of the most visited and attended exhibitions in 2018 with more than How many, how many attendances were there? I think the number I got were 160,000, but mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was prolongated twice. So it, it's not fair to compare it with the normal duration of an exhibition because it was running for nine months, mm -hmm. which, was, which was lucky for me because many curators saw it from all over the world and then invited it. And so it was, it was my travel agency during the last years, that project. Manifesto because, travels. <laughs> because because you, 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 you traveled that exhibition all over the world. I mean, it has been at, at how many uh, venues? Probably 30, think, 40 venues, no? No, not so. At 25, I would say, 25 mm -hmm, venues. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the film version, which also travels a lot. But it, it has a, it's a twofold um, issue for me because on one side, it was wonderful to, to get in contact with all these different uh, audiences, especially in this, in this sp sp times of, of populism when many people kind of connected the, the project to the issues of populism. So it was very interesting to enter in this very diff uh, different um, cultural sceneries and political backgrounds with the project, but on the, on the very personal level, it also kept me away from, from working on new project because it, uh, projects because it was very time intense, the whole um, tour I did with the project. Uh, yeah, maybe we give it a quick look at the project you launched uh, with us, which was a beautiful, immersive um, situation here. Oh, that's the little video we did together. Yeah, yeah. That's in the land of drought, a project where people are wearing masks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, we see here still. <laughs> so that project was shot in, in, in uh, Morocco and in the rural area in Germany. And the, the idea for this project actually derived from an invitation to, to illustrate um, a concert of Haydn's creation, the, the opus, which is about two hours long. And so I accepted that because I, I thought it was very interesting to look at, at Haydn's creation from a, from, a, from a very different angle, from a very far future or an imagined future where we, we have extinct ourselves and are probably not living anymore on planet Earth and then a an army of scientists will return to the planet and, and investigate what's over and what's, what's, what's still there. And that's what you could see then on that, on that big screen, which originally was behind the orchestra. And after the, after the concert, I edited a, um, an art, uh, art context version out of it with a different music, which you, which you remember very well, because it really sucked, I guess, down there in the gallery yeah. offices where you could hear it all of, all of the duration of the exhibition. Everybody was um, narcotified by it. Yeah, but what I think was so spectacular is that the, the surface of the stucco walls of the gallery space, and you were, we, we, you, you, you um, filled out the entire space with a, with a grainy um, sand-like colored carpet, and then we had yes. these bags. And yeah. so it was like you, you were, uh, and, and what I found so interesting in that the film, actually, uh, uh, everybody's very welcome and invited to check out Julian's website, which is a, a perfect documentation of all his work, and you can... Um, really get an idea of also here land of drought and um, so because what I think was spectacular is you you had two film sets one uh, was in the Ruhr area in a former um, um, uh, how, how you call it a mining uh, uh, yeah, all this kind of mining industry uh, the open mining and, and closed mining and and uh, yeah all the big uh, now I don't I'm also lacking the word in English the big Hochöfen I think that's what um, we see on this picture here right now right yes Exactly. Yeah. And then where was, this was an abundant uh, Hollywood uh, film set? Well, this is a, a thing I, I, I came across when I traveled with my students on a road trip in, in Morocco. 
So there's a city called Warsasat where, you know, in Morocco, they do a lot of movies that have a kind of biblical themes or uh, Egyptian, um, now recently more Iraq and Afghanistan war films because the, the desert setup is, is perfect for that. And as they, the, as they have a kind of easygoing regulations there, they, when, once they've finished filming, they leave then they abandon these film sets in the desert and leave them there to the, de to the wind and the, and the water. And um, so they look like archaeological uh, leftovers, like testimonies from, 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 you know, forgotten cultures or so. So I kind of use them as a, as a metaphor for um, time passing by and, and maybe a very far future where you would find all kinds of rudiments of our culture, including temples, religious places, but also industrial areas, industrial places. But what was so spectacular was this, I mean, it was a four by eight meter screen, I think we put up, which you could mm -hmm. um, see in the small video clip here. But um, anyway, it was really immersive um, uh, experience. And, and by this uh, meaning really immersive because it's a really stressed word. Um, this you know, the biggest, the biggest compliment that uh, was made to me at the gallery was that people had to wake up uh, visitors of the gallery when closing it down in that bean bags because they get kind of yeah. hypnotized. Yeah, often when, when we close the gallery and think they were still lying there. <laughs> this is a piece um, which um, is almost like a, it's a dance choreography in the harbor of Berlin. And it's kind of, an, of, an, of a, gangs, uh, a gangster um, story of money exchange which hasn't really, which never really succeed that was our show that money so loud to <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and this was a show we did in london and this was spectacular for those who see it. it's i mean when i look at these two films now your work somehow also the the manifesto one is shot in berlin it has a lot to do with berlin i would say no is that right it has because it's the place where these projects are, are uh, worked on and, and developed. And I'm, it has also a very practical reason. I'm working, all those projects always look very expensive with tiny budgets. And I'm, I have to be very inventive. So one, one reason to do that is stay at home and shoot at home. Although many projects are shot elsewhere, but Deep Gold specifically is, a, is a, also an homage to Berlin. Of course, it's an homage to the Berlin 20s. It is a, a homage to Louis Brunel's film L'Age d'Or, The Golden Age, which I kind of brought into a um, kind of weirdish, trippy, uh, Berghain meets uh, Weimar Republican um, atmosphere. And in it, you basically see uh, the protagonist of the original Brunel film going mad in a kind of uh, world um, driven by female power and energy, which he can't cope with. And... Um, yeah, and then he goes into this kind of um, phasmatagoric... Um, it's almost a matter of you describe there, right? It's like a woman in power somehow, at least. It's it Peaches, is, it, no? It, yeah. Peaches is in it, actually. Yeah, there's, there's uh, lots of friends in it. Also, again, um, for budget reasons. It was wonderful to do this um, also for all of us together as a, as a four days um, trippy, uh, wonderful experience diving back into this, this time that is now actually, yeah, we just had the Jubilee, right? A hundred years. Can you give us a bit of an uh, outlook what you're working on now and what will come next? So I'm working on, on three projects. Luckily, so far, nothing has been cancelled because of uh, the so-called corona crisis. So I'm um, still, uh, still working on, on, on these projects. One, two are postponed. One is a, an opera project, again, a, a musical thing, which I happen to do more and more. Um, it's it's uh, Robert Schumann's scenes from Goethe's Faust. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, an opera that is not so often performed because it doesn't really have a libretto. So what Schumann it, did, he chose from Faust one and Faust two fragments that he that spoke to him, and composed music to it. And as you as I don't know if you read uh, Faust two, but it's. Um, amazingly prophetic what Goethe wrote at the time. He was kind of foreseeing, uh, you know, capitalism, globalization, uh, the consequences of colonization. And it's, it's, an, it's an amazing um, actual um, um, uh, work of, of literature. And so I'm, uh, in a way, I'm kind of continuing the, the project that we showed at your gallery. Again, looking back on, on our time from a very far future. Um, so I'm working on a, on a film which involves a lot of digital work this time. We are approaching um, a kind of deserted planet from, from outer space. 
and uh, approaching it and then flying over a, a massive kind of mega city, which is completely abandoned and deserted. And once we, once we leave that, we find uh, leftovers from, from vegetation. And within one of these vegetation, vegetations or vegetation, vegetarian islands, we dive in and we find a, a techno rave happening as a, mm -hmm. as a symbol for, for escapism, if, if you want, or kind of a last remaining homage to... Freedom and hedonism. Freedom, and exactly. So uh, that, that part is shot already. You, you heard about it. I wanted you badly to be there as well. You couldn't come that day. But we shot, um, um, actually, we didn't shoot an existing rave. We had to produce the whole rave because I wanted it to happen in a very specific place and in a very specific atmosphere and didn't want to have, in a way, I didn't want to have the art crowd watching, watching somebody making an art movie about a, a rave. I wanted to have the really techno ravers. So I wasn't really spreading the news within the art world, but just um, with the help of some wonderful people um, setting up um, a real rave and, and we, we made it and we filmed it in a, I can show you a little bit if you want. Yeah, please. And who was DJing? Um, we had, well, let me, let me, let me show you this. And while we talk, please. what I have to do like this. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Just flip the camera. So what you're seeing is, um, you can't see more than that, right? No, you can't. So I mean, I only see a stick. I don't see anything in movement. No, it is, there's, there, there is motion, but it's extremely slow, slow motion. You see that? No. Oh, yeah, now I see. really uncut and teasing material. Yes, so Richie Horton was helping me a lot to, to um, for the lineup and, and DJing. We were, of course, not listening to that kind of music. This is just an appetizer for what you will later see in the, in the opera. And of course, like with the, with the creation of, with Heights creation, I will, I will create um, um, an art version of it with most probably very different music. And when can we expect the premiere? The premiere has now shifted. It's, uh, it was supposed to happen in Antwerp, and now it's going to happen in Montpellier next June, if, uh, if nothing changes. So in a year from now? In about a year from now, yeah. And the other big project I'm working on, um, that's actually the kind of main project which occupies me since, since a few years, um, is again a work um, where, I, where I work with um, existing text material. Yeah as a manifesto on many of the other recent projects. And this time it's kind of based on the, on 2000 years of the history of, of greed, of human greed. If you want so 2000 years of, of capitalism, although that mm -hmm. term is of course newer. And, but I don't want to look on- uh, well, look at it. I mean, it sounds like a, uh, almost like a coincidental connection to Jesus, no? That's 2020 years now. <laughs> yeah, if you want so, yeah. If you want so. So, um, yeah, for this project, I try not to be um, didactic or add up to the general chorus of, of uh, critique of capitalism, as capitalism since long has engulfed criticism and is not really caring if we criticize it or not. So the idea is more to focus on, on the euphoric aspect of capitalism, which actually uh, teamed and, and, and silenced us all, and me included. I'm, I'm, I'm a capitalist as you are. We are all capitalists. Mm -hmm. So it's more... It's more um, trying to focus on that, on that very suggestive uh, and, and almost hypnotic energy, which capitalism um, um, spreads on all of us. And, and of course trying to- euphoria, right? It's called Euphoria. It's a big euphoria. installation. I'm working with um, filmic scenes, a little bit comparable maybe to the recipe of other, other of my uh, multi-screen installations where, where I take historic text material and place it into contemporary uh, sceneries and context. It will be mainly shot in New York and in, in the Ukraine. And as you can guess, we are waiting for the goal uh, to shoot in New York. We're far away from that. So that takes some time. But it also involves um, a massive child chorus and some uh, really amazing jazz drummers. 
which I'm working with. That was always a dream of mine. I was very much into, into jazz um, in my youth. Um, I still am, but at the time I was listening a lot to, um, to live jazz concerts and I always wanted to make a film about a jazz solo. Um, and so now I'm kind of just mixing ideas and bringing this together. Let's see if the chemistry works or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this. And tell me, tell me, um, was your like really extreme and, and global success with Manifesto, were you sometimes a bit annoyed that your practice gets like limited to, to this project? Absolutely. Not only annoyed, I was, I was, um, I was um, slowed down enormously, as I said before. So it, but it wasn't really a choice to make, you know, it was a bit like, um, it was very difficult to stop that speedy train and I embraced it at, at one point. I actually, I must admit that in, in the very moment when, when, well, first of all, I want to say that, of course, that success has a lot to do with, with Kate Blanchett's fame and I'm very aware of that. And when, when we two met, which is already now like um, seven years ago or something, and that the idea came out to do something together and that very moment I could, I could also, of course, also feel all the, the negative aspect of that, uh, which, which it could possibly mean in the future, like um, having to be always def uh, defend yourself, why, you had to, why it had to be a Hollywood actress. Um, maybe it's gonna be a success, maybe a massive failure, so you have to really be strong and stand in that, in that, in that wind. And, but still, I, I, I voted, as you could see, as I did the project, I, I voted, the pros were just stronger than the cons, and I, I made that project. But I often thought about that very first moment when I was doubtful if that was a smart thing to do. I, I um, think that for those who see it, they understand that it's of relevance, that, she, that it's her because she really carries it, uh, as well as, of course, you mainly by, as directing it. But I think that's why um, probably it's, it's, it's uh, only we can... Uh, share a glimpse of an idea of your practice because I think that you are the, 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 the true argument and true um, evidence why um, art in general and especially your art needs to be uh, experienced in, um, in persona with uh, uh, on hand, so to speak, you know, like full mm. with all senses switched on uh, because it's like a really physical experience. Um, I rem you remember how, how much we discussed the carpet if it should go down or up oh, and absolutely that, and that i had i had the entire audio system recabled because when you came in into that room here let me show you again there was um you could see is it this one no here right is this a one yeah you don't really see it now but there was a there was a what was it a, a subwoofer you could see a subwoofer all the way at the end on the right hand corner of the screen I know, we talked about it for 24 hours. And then we said, we have to remove that subwoofer because it's uh, irritating the uh, experience, you know? It's like mm. taking away the experience. And it was, to it, it was very expensive to move that subwoofer, but it was totally worth it because, because it was, yeah, when you entered that film, you entered a different world, you know? And I think that was the same with the Hamburg Bahnhof installation and, and we'll be in the future. So we're gonna um, probably, We'll have to wait a year before we can see a serious installation of yours. Unfortunately, I, I think so. Yes, I'm very slow with my productions and in, in this time specifically slow. I'm, I'm, I'm happy though that uh, it didn't hit me uh, right in the making of something. So as you know, I have a very small studio structure and only um, built these big teams when, when I start shooting. And luckily I was not in the middle of it. So... Um, um, I, I just have to be uh, patient a little bit and wait until I can I can get going until I can shoot again and um, and in the meantime, actually, this is sorry, in the meantime sure. where we can uh, in the meantime where can we see Manifesto now is it is it possible on some streaming system because it's uh, distributed by DCM. Um, I'm not even sure how this works because I'm you know the um, uh, if you want I sold the not the rights but I sold the the distribution. Um, Rights to a world says agent and they deal with the different territories all over the world of now we're talking about the film version yeah. so i think you can get it i think you can find it on on itunes and on amazon prime if you are in the us i think i just heard today from a spanish friend that in spain you can also um see it online so on all different channels you just have to google it up i think it's it's all over the place but now that's the film version and the museum version is still running um in at the hirshon once it opens again we just prolongated it for another year 
and and at Machan, which is a new museum in in Jakarta, where I just uh, opened just it open, just, right, yeah. just before I just got home in time to be not um, locked there. But at the and Hanover, at the museum, it's not permanently installed. No, it's not permanently installed. No, no. because I, this is where yeah. I saw it last. Yeah. And if you want to, if you want to go, if you want to research or just see the individual channels or even find out more about that, everything is on my website. So that was a decision I made um, a few years ago that I, I would like to kind of uh, democratize my work and make it accessible. I might have um, annoyed a few collectors with that, but I still thought it was it was nice to have a twenty four seven exhibition which you can access from all over the world and around the clock. And yeah, I, had, I, had a, I had an interesting conversation with Julia Stoschek about this, also here yes. in this uh, TV format, so to speak, because um, I think that that will change rapidly now. Because again, it, you you're not even getting anywhere near there watching this on a computer screen or on a phone, then being in an mm. immersive installation. Of course not. It's really so, like yeah. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. like looking at a photocopy of a painting. Yeah. Exactly. Also you don't have to have a problem of ownership exactly. of, the, of the painting and the experience of the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Julian. Oh, you're sorry. What you were saying? No, that's okay. I, I just said I never had a complaint about a collector, but, but probably those who get offended by this never approached me, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, you yeah, arrived at the out. lake. We, are, we arrived at the lake. Very good. Very good. That was a was a nice drive with you, Jan. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. You should jump. You should jump in the water and open the open the season. I did it already two weeks ago. Yeah, without a mask. <laughs> without a mask. <laughs> Ciao, my friend. See you soon. Ciao. See you soon. Next Thanks, week, Jan. the kindergarten opens up. Have you I know. Not not ours though. Oh no, we are the no, same. We're in the same we are the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're right. Okay, so yeah. you have more actual news than I have. Yeah. Rita's allowed yeah, we are... to go from Monday on. Okay. Good. I see <laughs> you there. Ciao. Ciao.